question. How would you like to live in an amazing house with heated floors, high-tech kitchen, lighting, and media systems, and even a car, all powered only by the sun? We sent three kids to visit the Solar Decathlon in Washington, D.C. and meet some of the engineers who built these amazing solar homes. We'll see if they can design and build their own system to harness the sun's power. Come along with us as we discover engineering. We're at the Solar Decathlon. It's crazy cool. The Solar Decathlon brings together 20 teams from engineering schools all around the world who spend two years designing and building what truly are the homes of the future. The designs of these houses are amazing. It all went from a piece of paper to real life. They were just so modern. I was really amazed. I thought it was just going to be kind of like a boring tent-like structure with maybe like a heated place, but they really did defy what I thought was going to be the typical solar-powered house. Each one was unique. They all look different, but each one, they're all really spectacular houses. The amazing thing about all these houses is that they're all off the grid. They do not need any power from electric or gas companies. They get everything they need from the solar panels, harnessing the sun's energy to run appliances, and even the car plugged in out back. Everything was powered by the sun, which was just amazing. They could make houses with TVs and refrigerators and washers and dryers and have it run off of the sun. The kids got to check out a lot of the houses like this one from Georgia Tech. When I first walked into the Georgia Tech house, I really liked the design. On the interior, it was surrounded by LED lighting and it had actually plastic paneling, but the plastic paneling was curved, which made it, gave it like a really organic feel. I would be comfortable living in something like that. The one house that uh, was made basically in, on the inside of all plastic. I think that's a good idea because it's very resourceful and it's very recyclable. Cody spent some time checking out the kitchens. Cody, he's really into cooking and he just found all the appliances and just the room. He found it really accessible if, you know, he wanted to make a meal. I can cook in here. In the Penn State house, when you walk into the shower, not only is the water heated by the solar energy, the walls are also heated. In the Penn State house, they had moving walls all over the place. You could fill the milk bottles in the milk bottle wall with uh, colored water or different juices, and it would get like, it would give the house a mood or a feel. I thought that was pretty cool. You can move walls to have privacy, and you had even a moving desk. That was also a wall that you can push back for more space. You know, if you're having a party in your house and you feel that there's not enough room in your dining area, you can just take the wall and you can just move it back so there's even more space. You had pull-out closets. There was a closet that you didn't even know it was a closet. You just thought it was part of the wall. Blew my mind that they could even do that. Well, I was really inspired by the lighting engineer because she programmed a special remote to turn on all of the lights and turn off all the lights inside and outside of the house and she also would like figure out where they would all go and how they would turn on and what the design would be and I thought that was really cool that she would have such a role in making the house. All the engineers that we met, you know, they were all really into what they did and I just thought that all engineers, they would be, you know, these nerdy people but you find out that there are these really smart, intelligent people that love what they do and they're just trying to get together to make the world a better place. Everyone acts like this is their main thing that they love to do. They seem like they're having the best time of their life. It was really cool. It was an amazing trip. And I want one of those electric cars. They're pretty cool. As soon as I get my learners, I'm getting an electric car, Mom. Now that our kids have seen what these teams of engineers can do with the sun's power, we're going to put them to the test. Meet Sarah Jerez, an expert in solar ovens. You might say she's the Rachel Ray of the sun's rays. Well, anyway, let's see if she can get our kids to cook up something using the principles of solar energy. I heard that you were really impressed by the houses that you saw at the solar decathlon. Yeah. Definitely. Was there anything in particular that you really were impressed by? Yeah, I thought it was really cool how the cars were powered by the house. 
I just love the design of the houses because I'd love to live in a place like that. Me too. How about you, Cody? What did you like? The kitchens. The kitchens? Do you like to cook? Yes, I do. What do you like to cook? Well, my specialty is steak. You have a specialty? Yes, I do. Well, today's your lucky day, buddy, because what I'm going to have you do as a team is to cook for us. Where's the kitchen? Well, that's the thing about solar energy. We need the sun. So we're not going to use a traditional kitchen inside. We're going to go upstairs on the roof. Let's go. So here we are on the roof with our super duper solar oven. Do you like our kitchen? Yeah. <laughs> now, the way that this thing works is that sunlight is absorbed by dark surfaces. So we've lined the entire bottom of our oven with a dark surface. Our pots are also black. So that maximizes the amount of energy that is absorbed from the sun, translated into heat energy, and then we just have to trap it inside of our oven. That's why we have this clear double pane glass, and that insulates the heat from escaping our oven. We also have what these little panels on either side that are a reflective surface. We can adjust these to maximize the amount of sunlight that hits inside of our oven. Here are the elements that make this oven work. The reflector shining the light inside, the dark surface that absorbs the radiant energy and turns it into heat energy, and the clear surface that's going to keep that heat energy trapped inside the oven that's gonna make it cook. Do you have any questions? What do we eat? <laughs> we'll get to that. Let's go back inside. All right, everyone, let's come back in, gather around the table. So now that you saw the solar cooker upstairs, we're going to create our own pizza box solar cookers. All right. All right. So only using the, the stuff that's here. We have pizza boxes. We have some reflective surfaces here. When I saw all the stuff on the table, I was like, how are we going to make a solar powered cooker out of like aluminum foil and construction paper? So now it's the design phase. So I want you to put your heads together, use the whiteboard behind me and design a pizza cooker based on the, uh, the elements that we talked about upstairs on what makes a solar cooker work. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna leave and I'm gonna come back and check out your design later. Great. All right, good luck. First, the design phase. How are we going to make it so that the heat reflects? Yeah. We started talking about it and started trying to copy the one that's up on the roof. The black paper? Yeah. Why? So we could take the aluminum foil and we could like make almost a door. Discussing our design, we found out that it was a lot simpler than it had seemed. Yeah, she showed the kids started. dive right in and figure out a design for their pizza box solar oven quickly. Next, the build phase. I don't think we should put the aluminum foil on top as well. You don't? Um, no, because, you know, as black's the most heat absorbent color, it's mm -hmm. already going to be gathering the heat from the sun. Construction goes smoothly, except for a misplaced piece of aluminum foil that they quickly fix. Hey, we're done. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, let's take a look. You've got the dark surface inside there to absorb as much of the radiant energy as possible and turn it into heat energy. You've lined it nicely to keep all the heat inside and you've got your reflective surface to direct the sunlight into the box. Now let's put some food in there and start some cooking. Now the testing phase. They put the pizza box solar oven in the sun and load it up with some s'mores, graham cracker, chocolate and marshmallow. Now there's nothing left to do but hang out while it cooks. I could get used to cooking on a roof. So why solar cooking? Well, it's clean, convenient, non-polluting, and easy on the environment. And in places like Africa, people have to travel miles and miles and miles to gather firewood. And sometimes they don't even have firewood for their cooking fires. They have to gather dung. Well, this is a much more convenient and easy way because sunlight is very abundant. I was kind of shocked to find out that, you know, people actually had to heat some of their food by dung. So I think that, you know, solar energy is going to be a lot better solution for that. All right, let's check out how it did. All right, well, our chocolate's melted and this uh, marshmallow is actually cooked. Yeah. 
it was really cold outside and there was snow on the ground. I was like, how are we gonna heat up anything with this cardboard cooker? I was really shocked. The chocolate was so gooey. The marshmallows were really crispy and it worked really well. And now it's time to really test the results by eating them. Engineering is yummy. I feel like we built something and we were actually able to harness the power of the sun, you know, just for a little while. I think it was amazing. From solar houses that are off the grid to solar s'mores that are off the hook. I never realized how much engineers can do and how much they work together as a team and how much of an impact they can make in our society. These kids cooked up some fun when they got a chance to discover engineering. Solar cooking might take a little longer, but I can handle that.